Once upon a time, not so very long ago, there lived a big old grandfather clock called Oliver. He stood in the corner of Freddy's bedroom and made sure that Freddy, who wasn't very good at these things, got up in time for school. Oliver was a very conscientious old clock and was therefore most upset when he discovered that he'd gone and lost something rather important. Freddy! Freddy! Who is he? Me, Oliver the clock. Oliver? Inspiration! Inspiration! This is the Overworld, carnival time in the land of machinery, the fantastic new world invented by Mike Hazelwood for the adventures of Oliver the Grandfather Clock and his friend Freddy. But it all starts a long time before Inspiration Day. Like Alice in Wonderland and Dorothy in the Land of Oz, Freddy is the only human in this strange, unpredictable world. And before he can join the carnival, there are a lot of adventures in store for him amongst its cranky inhabitants. Oliver! Oliver! It's funny. He's an absent minded old thing. But with the undercock to help him, he should be all right. I wonder if he is. Gotcha! Oh, please to eat you. <laughs> oh, I mean meet you. <laughs> I'm the waste disposal unit. We're the bell telephones. I'm one. I'm two. I'm three. Ah, you're an air conditioning machine. The first is all the world, mein Freund. <laughs> Hi, I'm your actual high pipe, chief of the hungry dreams. Now me to present myself. Lord High Regulator and First Servant to His Majesty the Clockwork King, the Deferential Gearbox. Gosh! Gosh, well, I'm Freddy and this is... At your service, sir. Right time, first time, every time. Timekeeper-in-chief to my friend Freddy here. And I am... Uh, who am I? You're Oliver the Clock. He's Oliver the Clock. You ought to know you're old enough for goodness knows. And good old Oliver soon became a firm favorite with the little big time audience. Nice to see you, Freddy. By gum, you put on some weight since the last time I saw you. And you were a lot prettier then as well. On the undercog. That's Freddy. Is it? <laughs> Stupid of me. But he looks after me very well, you know. But between you and me, he's a bit too fond of violence, you know. You've got to watch him. The undercog turns out to be Oliver's bodyguard, also his memory, since Oliver can't actually remember anything much, except when it's time for meals. This is the scene which establishes Freddy and his two friends as traveling companions, and sets them off on their journey through the overworld to the Inspiration Day Carnival. It's a teleprinter! And it's... Oh, the writing machine! Yeah, and it's got a message on it! His Most Mechanical Majesty, the Clockwork King, requests the pleasure of company of Oliver the Clock and Friends at the annual Inspiration Day ceremonies to be held at the Royal Palace. That's great! Great! Hey, what's Inspiration Day? It's the overworld's biggest celebration every year. And it's got the biggest banquet you've ever seen. <laughs> Try to guess what we will see on Inspiration Day. Pepper mill with aching feet, pneumatic drill that dig the beat. Telephone that dig the beat, but have too much to say. It's such a celebration. isn't easy on television, 
because the home audience isn't seated in the dark as in the cinema or theater, and in a weekly series that must be hooked afresh with each new program. So an instantly compulsive style was needed to frame Oliver and the Overworld for television. What they chose was the simplest yet most compelling of all television styles, a live show. They've come! Hey, come back! Where are you? Huh. I've always been a ruffian, I feel it when I start. I bear me teeth and flex me on to tear the place apart. I'm in with a left, I'm in with a right and a crrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr